Hello people, how you doing today? It's your boy Obi Mark and you're welcome to Artified Optimist. So, it's no news that Deontay, the, the bronze bomber, Wilder, lost his WBC heavyweight championship bell to Tyson Fury and uh, a lot of comments have flowed in on the internet and lots of criticisms and uh, manipulations and uh, permutations and reflections about um, the fight so it's no longer news that he lost and it's also no longer news that Deontay Wilder has blamed his loss to the outfit that he put on and uh, a couple of other reasons that he put out. So what I want to do today is, um, although a lot of people have said that his excuses are not, uh, it, it doesn't hold water, but today I really want to give the man the benefit of doubt and I want to take a closer look at the reasons that the man preferred for his loss. And let's look at uh, the deep uh, intricacies behind uh, uh, the, the factors that he enumerated that led to his uh, loss. So uh, just quickly, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do that by clicking the subscribe button just below this video. And uh, also click the bell notification icon close to the subscribe button so that anytime I drop new videos, you can always get notified. And do make sure you like the video using the like button also below the video. And also share the video using the share button below the video. Okay, so Deontay Walder has blamed about, uh, he brought out four reasons why he lost the match. So number one on the list, Deontay Wilder blamed the costume that he put on. Of course, we know the costume weighed about 40 stones. So I'm going to be telling you uh, what the costume was made of and why it felt so heavy and why it changed the body chemistry of Wilder. And number two, uh, Wilder blamed his trainer, yeah, he, he blamed his trainer, Brendan, for throwing in the towel, and uh, we're going to discuss that a little bit much more later. And number three, he blamed uh, the referee, Bayless, and we're going to discuss why he blamed the referee. And number four, he blamed Tyson Fury himself. And I'm going to tell you why he blamed Tyson Fury. So let's get on to the first reason. The first reason is um, blaming the loss on... Uh, the costume. So according to Wilder, the costume that he put on changed his body chemistry. And what he said was that when the costume was done, he only had one opportunity to try it on. And at that time when he tried it on, due to the excitement surrounding the fight, you know, he never got to uh, really pay attention to the weight that the costume put on him and how it changed his body chemistry. And he said at that point, although he knew, but he didn't feel that it would be of an impact to the fight. And Wilder claimed that on the fight day, when he put the costume on, uh, he put it on about 10 to 15 minutes before he staged the walkout. And why he did that, he wasn't just sitting on the spot, he was moving around and that was his claim. So he said he put on the costume without wearing the helmet. Then. When it was time to walk out, he put on the helmet and he walked out with it. And he said that walk was a long walk. And he said that walk took him time, I think about 10 to 15 minutes. And that involved going up the stairs. And he said all of these played a vital part in weakening his legs. So these activities, the costume, the weight it brought on his body took out his legs. And by the time he got into the ring and the costume was taken off, both the helmet and the uh, body gear, when they were taken off, he knew that his legs were you know, completely affected. And at the third round, according to him, his legs were completely shot out. So why did the costume affect his body so much? Um, there were batteries that were infused into the costume, you know, to light up the costume. The costume had uh, some kind of... Uh, lead light attached to it especially uh on the emerald so it carried extra batteries and all of these added to the weight problem and they impacted on his performance now i asked myself why did he have to pay so much attention on his appearance rather than on the fight according to wilder he put on that kind of glam that kind of uh, glamorous show in honor or in respect for black history month. Uh, for those who don't know about the Black History Month, the Black History Month is a month 
which uh it, it's a certain month of the year which is february and uh, it ranges from 1st of february to 29th of february where uh, black history in america is celebrated there was a time in american history where the blacks were not uh allowed to vote but um over time that has changed and the blacks can now vote so that period of the month is used to celebrate the blacks and how their right to vote came about and uh how they've developed and evolved all through the time so he used the costume as uh, a means to celebrate black friday man he wanted to make it glamorous for his fans and for the black people but he didn't know that it would have such effect on him you know so can we say that Deontay Wilder put uh, appearance ahead of performance was he more concentrated on his appearance than on the performance on the ring was he trying to please the fans more than doing his job in the ring well so it seemed even Deontay Wilder admitted to it that he he put too much attention on appearance and that cost him the fight and uh, from recent posts recent interviews that he's been granting after the the loss to Tyson Fury he has insinuated that a lot of changes are going to be done in his camp and henceforth no longer will he wear such heavy outfit although Wilder himself has not stated intention to pathways with his designers those who make his uh, costume but it seems that he's going to be tweaking a little bit of uh, he'll be tweaking one or two later on the makers of his costume cosmos lombino and donato crowley of cosmos glam squad have uh, made responses to uh Wilder's claim that his loss was caused by the costume uh, according to them and some other executives of uh, the outfit, they've, uh, they've insinuated that um, heavier outfits or costumes have been worn by other athletes and these they impede their performance. For instance, uh, this outfit is the same outfit that makes costumes for Dylan White. They claim that um, Dylan White's previous fight, which is Zora, uh, the costume that he put on was made by the same uh, fashion designers and uh, it didn't impede his uh, performance. So they seem to be on the side that um, the Yentes loss might probably not have been the outfit. Okay? Um, and they also claim that uh, right from the very start when uh, Wilder and his wife approached them about the bronze bomber concept, They've always tried to walk in line with the concept and uh, try to see how they could portray that concept. Now, from Deontay's wider, according to Deontay, there were a whole lot that got into that outfit that made it so heavy. In Deontay's own words, he said, When I first tried it on, I saw it had some type of weight to it. But during that time, you get so excited and you want people to see it. But we immediately started feeling. Okay, so he goes and says, I think I'm just gonna have to make some adjustments with the accessories that's on there. Wilder explained during an interview. Uh, he says, my last couple of outfits, they had no weight on it, but it was more styrofoam. This time around, we added different heavy things. The skulls, take note of that, the skulls, the rhinestones that was on there. There was a lot of things that were designed on there that made it very, very, very heavy. You know, even with the mask, it had battery packs in the mask, so it was quite a bit, you know, and I'm definitely going to change that up. That's something that I'll never do again. So there you get it. In the words of uh, Deontay Wilder, a lot went into making that outfit and that impeded his performance. It took out a lot of his energy and his legs too. So the next we're going to look at is um, he blamed the fight, he, the loss on Tyson Fury. According to Deontay Wilder, he made out his feelings very clear that Tyson Fury fought very dirty in the match. As a matter of fact, he said one of the reasons why his legs were taken out on time was because Tyson Fury was leaning on him most of the times, which I agree. Tyson Fury really leaned on him. Tyson Fury really put his weight on him for a whole a, a lot, a, a great part of the march. So according to the other wider, that took his legs off. 
But should that be an excuse? It's a fight. Fighters are meant to lean on each other. Well, you tell me what you feel about that. And he also said Tyson Fury was fighting dirty. For instance, Tyson Fury, according to him, Tyson Fury was giving him knocks to the back of his head and to his neck, which shouldn't have been allowed. So what do you think? Were Tyson Fury's punches to Deontay Wilder illegal ones? Was he punching me in the wrong places? According to Wilder, this also contributed to his loss. And that brings me to the third factor. He talked about the referee. He blamed it on the referee. Uh, in uh, Wilder's interview with Yahoo Sports, Wilder claimed that he had uh, a one-on-one -on -one conversation with the referee and the referee told him that there are certain things that he shouldn't do in the match because if he does them, it's going to disqualify him. But to Wilder's amazement, according to Wilder, uh, these same things the referee asked him not to do, Tyson Fury was doing them to him and the ref did nothing. So at this point, he's blaming the loss also on the referee. And he was saying there were times where he should have cautioned and uh, maybe even made stringent... Uh, uh, giving stringent punishments on Tyson Fury, but he refused to do that. Although in a match, there was a point where, at a point where the referee took a point from Tyson Fury's points. Well, this was not enough to stop Tyson Fury from doing what he had to do. So while they said Tyson Fury fought dirty in the match, he was giving him punches in the wrong places and the referee did nothing about it. So could Wilder be uh, insinuating that the referee was bribed or something? Before this match, a lot of people had uh, the notion that the referee was going to play the match in favor of Wilder. But here is why, here Wilder is blaming the referee that the referee did not do his job properly. He allowed the dirty game to go on, which he, sh he shouldn't have. So that's point number three. Now, point number four on a very important point, Wilder blamed his loss on his trainer, one of his trainers, Brendan. Uh, Wilder has claimed that They've had this conversation time and time again. He has had this conversation time and time again with his team that never, never should they throw in the tower, no matter what the situation is. And he said he loves to go out there and go out on his shield and the tower should not be thrown in because he said he's a warrior and he loves to fight to the death. That let him fight until his body hits the canvas. And he says he, uh, he has he has decided many times that he wants to go there and put a body to the floor. If he's the one advocating for this, why shouldn't someone else do it to him? Why should they throw in the towel? So he was really, really upset with his trainer who threw in the towel after the seventh round or during the seventh round when Wilder was no longer giving responses to the punches that were thrown at him by Tyson Fury. Um, so what do you think, guys? Do you think these... Uh, these claims, these claims really hold water that they were enough to make him lose. Um, I, for a person, I decided to give Wilder the benefit of doubt. That's why I decided to make this video and take a, a, a closer look at what the man is saying. Is there really an element of truth in what he's trying to say? So, for instance, uh, for me as a person, if I wear a certain outfit for the first time, it has a way of impeding my, my body chemistry, my body psychology, because the, the, the outfit is new. It takes me time to get accustomed to it. So who knows, maybe that just really could have affected um, Wilder in this match. Not to talk of the weight and the battery and the lead light, but who's really to blame? Like Tyson Fury, uh, Wilder, had, Wilder himself has claimed that uh, he really has no one to blame because the decision was his in the first place. He was supposed to decide whether to put on that outfit or not, but he decided to wear it. So what he claimed was that he was trying to give uh, a, a, a good appearance to the fans in honor of Black History Month. So we're going to say he carelessly put appearance before performance, which was not too cool. And... Um, so there you go, guys. Uh, take a look at it. So he blamed uh, the costume. He blamed the referee. He blamed his own trainer. And then he blamed Tyson Fury. Now, what we don't know yet is if he's going to fire his trainer. Although he has said that there was, there's going to be a lot of changes to his camp. Come, So, so just by the way, Tyson uh, Wilder, has, uh, Wilder has shown interest to... Uh, set the ball rolling for the trilogy 
so he intends to activate the rematch clause and that that match is set to take place somewhere in july i think july 17th if i'm not mistaken you know somewhere within that 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 date and we might likely see wilder and fury go at it again in the ring and wilder believes that before that time he'll be more than ready to face Fury and uh, he also stated in his interview with uh, Yahoo Sports that he's going to be going on vacation next month in March somewhere in Africa and rumor has it that he's coming to Nigeria for his vacation. Now I'm beginning to wonder why is there so much attention going into Nigeria this period? Many boxers seem to be giving attention to Nigeria. Why is it like that? Of course, you all know the gum shield that Tyson Fury put on while he was fighting on the ring with Durant Wilder's second ma match. He was wearing a Nigerian customized gum shield. Why was that? And we all know that Joshua currently uh, recently came to Nigeria. I think he's still in the country as I speak. You know why so much interest in Nigeria? Even the the, the music artists are considering coming over to Nigeria. Um, Ling Wayne has shown his interest of coming to Nigeria. So so does Cardi B. Akon comes here a lot of the time, uh, and even McMills has stated his interest to come to Nigeria. So I'm wondering why the sudden interest in Nigeria from boxers and even from uh, musical artists. So we really cannot tell why Wilder wants to spend his vacation in Africa and in Nigeria. Well, it's left to him and his team. Maybe there's something special they're just uh, going to derive from Nigeria or maybe to help him. And there's been rumors that uh, Wilder's ancestry has been traced to Nigeria. So who knows, maybe that's the reason why he wants to come and spend his vacation here in Nigeria. So guys, here we are. These are the hidden facts that led to Deontay, Deontay's loss to Tyson Fury. Do you think these reasons are strong enough? Uh, uh, but for me, I think uh, body chemistry really, really affected Deontay Wilder. Something wasn't right. When he was being interviewed, he said a lot of people told him that something wasn't right. And he said, yes, definitely something wasn't right right it was unlike uh the Deontay Wilder that we used to know in his fight uh commentators and analysts have, have claimed that he felt that way because he has never met someone of Tyson Fury's caliber which could also be true you know you could go into the ring feeling great but once your opponent puts that punch on you the first one it changes your entire chemistry it changes it all over you know so maybe that's what happened to Tyson Fury. Uh, sorry, to Deontay Wilder. So in the next match, we wish him, we wish him the best. We wish both fighters the best. And uh, I'm sure he's a professional and uh, he has a professional team. So his professional team will just look into what cost uh, the loss and uh, they will tweak it and know how to adjust. And trust me, Fury also is a professional. And now that he's put his hand on the WBC, I don't think Fury, I don't think Fury wants to let it go very soon so a lot of people seem to be saying no we don't want this trilogy we're already seen enough there's nothing else the until while they can bring to the table but the young man is saying there is something he still has a lot to offer in this fight so let's give him the benefit of doubt i'm definitely gonna follow up this story again and uh july 17th we will see but definitely that will be the last stroke that will break the camera's back so we're going to see who make it out of that one and who will be victorious. Uh, just so I let you know, the Yontes ranking has greatly plummeted. I was on Boxing Rec just this afternoon. I was looking at the rankings and the Yonte has dropped down the pecking order and he's on number f number five in uh, on be Boxing Rec. And guess what? Anthony Joshua is number one on Boxing Rec, so Anthony Joshua is the number one heavyweight champion at the moment. Joshua is in the number one sport. Tyson Fury is in the number, number two sport. Andy Ruiz is in the number three sport. And then you have, uh, uh, I think, Dylan White. Yes, you have Dylan White in the number four sport. And then you have um, Wilder in the fifth spot and so on and so forth so uh this loss has really really affected Deontay's reputation you know a lot of his fans have uh have uh, deserted him but i've come to wonder why are boxing fans like this once their champion or their favorite fighter loses a lot of them seem to decamp and hate on on the fighter 
Well, diehard fans should stick to their fighters. Come rain, come shine, come loss or, or win. So my people, that's what I have for you today. Do make sure you subscribe to the channel, like the video, share it. If you haven't done that, please click the bell notification icon. If you haven't done that, please subscribe to the channel and don't forget to drop a comment below. I'll see you in the next one. And until then, keep staying fit, keep staying good and do take care of yourself. From this end, it's bye-bye. Adios.